Scott Vickers, Able Distributors. Today we're here to talk about the Tecmar 519 thermostat. This particular thermostat controls radiant floor heating. So we're gonna start with it from the ground up, or as some say, the floor up. Um, we're gonna talk about the sensor locations, um, starting with uh, a thin set application. Um, in the thin set, you wanna mount this uh, sensor midway between the heating elements. Um, on a thin floor covering, we're gonna to wanna to have a eighth inch wide by a 1 16th inch channel into the subfloor. And then we're gonna to wanna to have a groove 3 16ths of an inch wide by 3 16ths of an inch deep by an inch and three quarters long. Once again, this sensor will be located between the elements. Now we're moving to the thick floor coverings. We're gonna also have a groove 3 16ths of an inch wide by 3 16ths of an inch deep by an inch and three quarter long located between the elements as well. One thing we wanna make sure of when we put these sensors in is that they are located somewhere midway between that radiant floor loop. Um, so these are the three we're gonna cover now. Please keep following to see the next two applications. Okay, back at it. Tecmar 519 retrofit sensor locations. Um, retrofit meaning, say uh, we, have, we currently have a radiant floor installed, we have a Tecmar uh, 519 control in there, and our sensor has gone bad, and the prior contractor didn't give us any ability to replace that sensor. Here are some, uh, here are some ways that we can do so. Um, so for tile applications, um, what we can do is we can chisel out that grout line, uh, replace that sensor, um, actually retrofit that sensor into a new location, and uh, that, that'll suffice. Um, we wanna put, make sure we put that sensor in a low traffic area, meaning an area where people are not gonna be walking over it constantly so that it doesn't disrupt that potential grout that might be a little weaker than the, than the rest. Um, and we also have to make sure that we have no splices in that floor meaning we want that wire directly right to that control, or if we do splice it, make sure it's in a wall or out of an area where a nail or a screw could potentially be touching it. Now we'll move on to the bottom of a subfloor. So this one's kind of cool, actually. I never really realized that uh, this could potentially be done on a subfloor um, in a retrofit application where, like there, you have a sensor you can't replace. So what we can do is we can cut a one-inch thick piece of rigid insulation, so like foam board or anything like that, and cut that into a six-by-six six square. Now in that six by six square, we're gonna cut a groove into the insulation. We're gonna sandwich that sensor between the insulation and the subfloor once it's installed in that uh, piece of insulation. Um, and, uh, and of course, to, to fasten it to the bottom of the subfloor, um, I would say, you know, take some liquid nails potentially, maybe a couple uh, drywall screws and get that thing sealed up there. Now, one thing I wanna make sure of is that when we replace that sensor in these applications and the prior applications, that that sensor is located in the middle of any loop so that we don't trick that sensor with false heating. So there you have it, retrofit applications. Um, these are the uh, guidelines and if you wanna find more, you can look on the uh, Able Distributors website and find our video. Um, we're gonna go through uh, some basic slab sensor testing. So the first thing we're gonna need in regards to this testing is gonna, we're gonna need a meter capable of measuring 5,000 K ohms. We're gonna need a quality digital thermometer and or a thermal imager. I think using both of these gives us the best of both worlds. That thermometer is gonna allow us to actually sense the temperature of that floor. And with a thermal Im imager, it's gonna allow us to depict where that sensor is located in regards to the loop. So in order to do so, we're gonna have to first disconnect the SEN and the common at the thermostat. SEN obviously stands for sensor. So what we're gonna do then is measure the resistance at the sensor and the common wires. When we measure that resistance, it's gonna give us a reading, which, will refer, which you can refer to in the chart in the actual installation instructions. So for an example, at 100 degrees Fahrenheit, your ohm reading should be 5,828 ohms. So here you got it, the five basic steps you'll need to troubleshoot that sensor. Um, in any application. Right back at it, Tecmar 519. Um, we're gonna go through here in the next uh, couple sets of videos um, in regards to applications regarding this control. First, we're gonna start off with a zone valve application. So you probably see this up here. Certain guys get it, certain guys don't. What we got is a basic 24 volt circuit being applied to this control. Um, it needs 24 volts to power up. So as you can see here is our TF, which is our transformer. We got our 24 volts coming up to R. We also have a common connection to apply 24 volts to that thermostat at all times. 
What we're gonna see here between R and RH, which is actually installed in the controller, we see a jumper, right? So that jumper, what it does is it brings that 24 volts from R over to RH, which is our heating circuit. So to initialize this control, what we'll have is a call for heat or a call for radiant floors. Um, so what's gonna happen here is RH is gonna energize W1. W1 is gonna come back here, which is our 24 volt signal now, come all the way back down, and it's gonna say, hey, I need to energize this valve, we need heat. So this zone valve is gonna get energized with 24 volts, once again, tied into our common, which completes that circuit. Once that circuit there is completed and motor has opened, we are now gonna close our end switch is at the boiler, which is known as XX. So once that happens, we will see that boiler engage and our control is doing its thing. If, this, if some guys find this rather complicated, we do have a solution at Able Distributors. We have a Kalefi zone valve control board, which will basically take all of this and interface it into a simple solution. Also, one thing I forgot to cover here is our slab sensor. Um, we mentioned it in prior videos, and these are the connections you will be testing. These wires will be removed from S1 and common. You will take these wires and you will test that and then I'll give you your ohm reading correlating to that temperature. There you have it, zone valve control on the 519 thermostat. We're gonna go over the pump control aspect of this thermostat. So the way we can do this is obviously we have one, two, three, four components to this, right? We have a transformer, we have a relay, we have a pump, and ultimately we have the boiler. So in order to make this control operate that boiler and that pump, what we need to do is make sure, first of all, we have a call for heat, right? So we're gonna have 24 volts to R, C to common, and there's gonna be a factory installed jumper between R and RH. RH is our heating circuit. On an initialized call for heat, we're gonna have RH power W1. W1 is gonna come back to one side of our relay and then ultimately complete that circuit by going back to common. Once that 24 volts energizes this relay, we now have two normally open sets of contacts, which are normally open with no power is applied. When power is applied to this relay on a call for heat, these contacts will close. So in turn, here's what's going to happen. You're gonna have 120 volts from here sitting at one side of this relay. When that relay closes, that engages that 120 volts to the pump, and then that neutral comes back down to complete that circuit, that pump will be up and running. On the second set of contacts on this relay, we're going to have our boiler circuit. So in turn, what's gonna happen again is when W1 comes back to this relay, energizes it, we complete our circuit by going back to common, this set of contacts is, gonna, is going to close and it's gonna allow us to fire that boiler up. This operation and this operation will happen simultaneously at the same time once that relay is energized. For many of you where this may seem like a complicated drawing, Able Distributors does provide a simple solution, which is our Kalefi zone panel relay. This will incorporate this whole wiring diagram into a simple solution. We're gonna go over the standard button control involved in this thermostat. So as you can see here, we have a up button and a down button, hotter, cooler. So for the full functionality of these buttons, we can go through these five things here. Up or down is gonna control our temperature operation. We can shut off the floor and the air heating by holding this down button. We can turn this control back on by holding this up button. We can also use this button once it's back on to control the mode. We will go over the modes later. Uh, this thermostat, once this is turned back on into heating, if it has been turned off, will resume heating at the last set temperature. Back at it, Tecmar 519 controls. We're gonna get into the button section on this, this thermostat and how you can get into there to select the desired parameters. So as you can see, we have two buttons, just like we showed in the last video. We have an up and we have a down. In order to access this homeowner section of this control, you're gonna hold these two buttons down for three seconds, and that's gonna get you to be able to select heat on or off. Once you do that, you will move down one further and you'll be able to select your desired temperature reading, whether it's in Fahrenheit or in Celsius. We will also be able to set the floor minimum temperature, but an auxiliary sensor and a room sensor must be on. Now diving one step further, we're gonna get into the installer mode on this thermostat. 
So what we will need to do, in the, for instance, in this, is we will need to hold down those two buttons for five more seconds, which is a total of eight seconds in order to access these parameters. The first one we're gonna see is a select auxiliary sensor. The select auxiliary sensor is gonna give us the option to select what kind of sensor we're using in this application, whether it's floor, an indoor sensor, or an outdoor sensor. We'll also to be, be able to set our floor maximum temp. So whatever that slab calls for, and whatever that homeowner wants it to, that desired slab temp to be, we can achieve that right here. This control also, also gives us a way to set an away temperature. So you leave for out of town, you know, it's gonna be, it's gonna be cold outside, you can set that slab temp down to say 50, 60 degrees. This control also has a built-in room sensor. But that room sensor, what it does is it will sense room temp and it will work with the floor temp to provide a comfortable solution in your home. Thank <laughs> you.